Welcome to the channel guys, we are back again and today I'm going to be talking about 10 fragrances that are for the most part hyped up or loved that I personally don't really like. Uh, so stay tuned for that and if you like top 10 list fragrance reviews, first impressions, clone comparisons and fragrance battles, hit that subscribe button for more great content. So this was a fragrance uh, idea that I believe was done by um, Northwest Sense. I will link his um, channel down below. Now he might have been tagged by somebody else, but I think he did an open tag, so I decided to take it up. It took me a while to actually get around to doing it, but here I am doing it. I think it was five, but I will talk about ten uh, fragrances just because why not. Um, now first I'm going to give out two honorable mentions, only because I've talked about them a lot as fragrances that I don't really like, so they're not a surprise. Um, and they're the easy ones to sort of pick on, I guess, because they are kind of real big hype beasts in the community. So first one, Baccarat Rouge 540. This one I actually do not like. Um, and, and mostly because to me, especially when it's on my skin, it smells like latex. I get that latex vibe. I've tried the x trait I've tried the um, EDP. In both cases, latex, latex. It's all I smell. Um, and so I'm not really a big fan of that one. Now the next one I've mentioned a couple times, Creed Aventus. I don't dislike this fragrance, but I also don't really get why it's such a massive hype beast. You know, maybe when it was first released, you know, with all the fragrances that were around at the time, it was really groundbreaking. I mean, maybe that's the case, but for me, it's it's a nice fragrance, but it's, it's not something that personally I would ever reach for or wear. So I actually went through a lot of these fragrances. I picked off the top uh, you know, 2020 list for men's fragrances, for niche fragrances, etc. Uh, from Fragrantica. So these were highly voted fragrances from, you know, people in the community. And I picked out some of the ones that personally I don't really like that much. Um, or don't really get the hype behind. So you know what? Let's get into it. First one, Aqua Amara. Um, this one to me discontinued for an absolute reason. I know uh, Jeremy's talked about this one, hyped it up, the strength of the ocean. To me, I get that sort of rotten egg vibe. I still remember the first time I tried this one out, I had heard about it from Jeremy, sprayed it on my hand, and I instantly wanted to, you know, as at a store tester, instantly basically had to scrub it. I literally spat on my hand to wipe it off and scrub it off as much as possible because within about five seconds of trying this one out, it absolutely was horrible. So that rotten egg smell or whatever it is that a lot of people talk about that one having, that's what I smell and I don't really like it. Next one on the list. Now this one again, it's not, this is one that I don't mind. Um, it's just one that personally I wouldn't really reach for. It's one that I could see buying just because of the versatility, but I think even, and the mass appeal, but I think for me, even, you know, there's fragrances that I really enjoy wearing that are also mass appealing. So I would probably stay away from doing it, but I could almost consider buying it because it is something that's just easy to wear. And that is Reflection Man by Amouage. This one gets compared, I think, to like a niche um, uh, Lamal, which I'm not a big fan of. And it also smells, I guess, a little bit like, and I've totally forgotten this, a Parfums de Marly fragrance that I've now completely forgotten the name of that does smell a little bit like uh, La Mall as well, which again, I don't mind the fragrance. It's a nice sort of clean, easy to wear men's fragrance. And it is one that I think is mass appealing. The performance of this one, fantastic. Uh, at least from the sample that I've had, I know people say the older formulation is better. Maybe that's true. But for me, it's, it's a nice fragrance and it performs really well. And if you like it, it's definitely got, the, to me, the value is there. It's just not one that I would find myself reaching for. It is just, to me, Okay, so next one. This is one I used to like. Um, there's a couple reasons why I didn't don't really like it that much anymore, but that fragrance is La Nuit de L'Homme. Not a big fan of this fragrance. I think to me, it's very weak on the performance, a little bit too weak. I find that if I was in a situation where I would wear La Nuit, I would prefer to wear Dolce Gabbana the one EDP. I just think, find it to be a richer, denser, uh, more enjoyable fragrance. Whereas um, La Nuit de L'Homme is a sort of watery, semi-sweet kind of fragrance. I don't really get much of the spice cardamom from it. Maybe I would have loved an older version and I do uh, think about it at some point, I might get an order from Alexandria to try their new version of the old version of La Nuit de L'Homme, which um, is supposed to be really, really spot on. So um, I might do that at some point and see if I prefer it. More cardamom would be nice. More of that spice would be nice. Um, 
what I would say actually is from this line, I much prefer Le Parfum. I think it is really underrated. It's just beautifully creamy, um, sensual. It has a little bit more thickness, depth, character, and I would vastly prefer to get Le Parfum over a Lanouille de Lump, in my personal opinion. And if you haven't tried that one out from the line, I do think it's one you should check out. Uh, very nice, very nice indeed. Next one, Eros. Um, you know what, I like mint, I like apple, but I don't really get a really nice crisp mint or apple note from Eros. Um, the dry down is nice, um, but for me personally, I actually like flame better and because I found the, maybe I found the opening to be a little bit more mature in that sense. It's this nice spicy, kind of reminded me of like the cinnamon chews or candies. Um, and it might be one reason why I did like it so much, had a sort of good memories associated with it. But I did really, really like uh, Flame. And I do know that people I, I was hanging out with when I was when I was able to hang out with people also liked that one when I wore it. So I did like Flame. I'm not a huge fan of Eros. The next one, I'm going to be fair and say I haven't tried it in a long time. I do want to try it again and review it. Maybe my opinion will change when I give it more time to digest. And I know a lot of people are going to say this is sacrilegious. But I was not a big fan of... Uh, Lair du Desert Moroccan. I know that's probably their most popular fra fragrance from Toyer or Tower Parfums. And I see the craftsmanship in the fragrance. It's really well done. It's well blended. And this is kind of what I think about a lot of Tower fragrances. They're very artistic, very different, very unique, which is fine. But a lot of them I find to be something that I wouldn't really find myself wearing. So like... Another one from the house, which isn't talked about a lot, is Lude, uh, which, you know, it's very well-crafted, beautiful, artistic perfume that I can appreciate the workmanship that went into it, but at the same time, it's not something that I would ever see myself wearing. And so that's kind of the way I feel about Lair, Du Desert Moroccan. Um, no, I butchered that name. It's nice enough, but... And I would totally recommend trying it out, but for me, it's just not something I would reach for. Now, like I said, I've tried it maybe twice, and maybe uh, if I give it a little bit more time, if I can find my sample and dig it out, I'll appreciate it and enjoy it a little bit more. But like I said, it's not that it smells unpleasant, it's just that it's not one that I would ever wear. Next on the list, a very popular one as well, Prada Lom. This one smells great on other people, but on me, it smells like toothpaste. That is why I don't don't like this fragrance. It, it just smells very, very nice. It's a really great, clean, fresh fragrance. And it's one that's very mass appealing. But to me, it just smells like toothpaste on my skin. So for me, it's a pass. Um, it's just a pass. Next one, another popular one, Cool Water. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Green Irish Tweed, so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that I don't like cool water. I don't mind Green Irish Tweed. And in fact, I like Le Parfait by Armoff, which is a more citrusy, you know, version of Green Irish Tweed. It has pineapple in it, for example. It's a good fragrance. Cool water to me is worse than Green Irish Tweed in every possible way because of the addition of the mint. I like mint, and it doesn't smell like toothpaste, so I'm going to say that too so it doesn't have that mouth washy toothpaste vibe that mint can have but it doesn't work with the composition in my opinion you have these sort of rolling green hills kind of vibe but the mint it ruins the picture to me from my personal opinion and it just does not work so that is my personal opinion don't like cool water intense was okay if i recall maybe if i find my my sample i can do a full review on it but that is a big pile i don't know if i can actually find it Completely different fragrance though. So even if you don't like cool water, intense you might like, um, but it's very, very different. So into the top three, number three, Paco Rabanne 1 million. This fragrance actually had a really appealing 10 second bit when I tried it on. Very nice, um, sweet in the opening, but this is one that becomes so cloying and that's with like one spray. And I don't know if they've maybe formulated but when something is overpowering with one spray like i actually felt nauseous just from trying this out and that is a very bad sign so obviously a very big pass from me i do like some from the line lucky is nice um previous probably my favorite just because it has a little bit more 
um, of the thick character that, and sweetness that I like in a sort of gourmand fragrance. And it does smell a little bit like Wajon. So um, I do like that one. Lucky is nice, very youthful fragrance. So I kind of not super into it because I feel like I'm getting a little bit anyways, more mature, a little bit older. And not to say you can't wear those kinds of fragrances. It just doesn't feel like it fits me at this current moment in life. Now, top two. Number two, another one that I'll probably get hung for, but I have kind of expressed this on my channel before, and that's Annie. Again, this is one that becomes a little bit too much for its own good. It's just so nuclear. Like a spray from a decant, which is always going to be less than a sprayer. On a test strip, I will smell this in a large room. I will smell it on the other side of the room. I will be in the hallway and I will smell it. And it's so overpowering and so persistent that it just becomes too much for its own good. The other thing that I found about it is that it is a little bit more of a citrusy vanilla where I was really expecting, especially on what other people were saying, a little bit more of a spicy vanilla. And so I was let down in that regards. I think I would have liked it more with more spice, but for me, there was a lot more of the citruses in it and it just came off a little bit weird. It's not bad per se, but it is really overpowering. It might be a really nice outdoor fragrance. I think those are the situations where it would work best. And now we are at the number one fragrance. And this is probably gonna make us some more people angry. The Dior Homme, the OG. I wasn't a big fan of the new 2020 release either. It was nice, um, but it also was kind of forgetful. So it didn't have anything to me that smelled particularly special, but it was a nice, easy wear. The original release is way too much like a bag of lipstick. Like, why do I want to smell like a makeup bag? I mean, the quality is there. And again, some of the ones from the line I do like. I liked, um, I think it was Low or something like that. Um, I liked the Cologne. I did actually like the Intense. I think the Cocoa made it a lot nicer, not as lipsticky. Uh, but the original, it just did not work for me. I don't want to smell like a makeup bag. It just doesn't work. But that's, again, all my personal taste. And that's the list. So, you know what? I'm going to cut the video there. If there's a, a fragrance that you don't like that's really, really popular, leave a comment down below. Let me know uh, what it is. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.